Hear the best of TNC Radio live every night. It's TNC Radio Prime Time. Interviews, music, information, and news you can use every night, seven to nine Eastern, six to eight Central. TNC Radio Prime Time. <laughs> Welcome in TNC Radio Live. This is Taillights with Larry and Angie Baum. Welcome back, everybody. So glad to be here. Uh, we got a really special show for you tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking with Kyla. She is with Truckers Against Trafficking, um, and so we're going to be talking a little bit about human trafficking, which of course I know is not a light subject, but it's an important subject, especially with what we do in the trucking industry. And so I want to give you guys just a little information. Uh, human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry every year. Uh, every year, traffickers prey on the most vulnerable of people, usually when they are at the lowest points in their lives or going through a real true tragedy. Human trafficking can happen to anyone, but some of the people are more vulnerable than others. The significant risk factors include recent migration or relocation, substance use, mental health concerns, involvement with the children welfare system, or just being a runway or a homeless youth. Often traffickers will identify and then leverage their victims' vulnerabilities in order for them to create a de dependency on them. As truck drivers, we observe and see so many things over the road on a daily basis that Truckers Against Trafficking is trying to bridge that gap. They're going to help educate our trucking community on the signs and things that we need to look out for and to notice and understand of human trafficking. Tonight, we're honored to have with us Kyla. She is the Deputy Director and Senior Director of Pub Public Sector Engagement. Welcome aboard, Kyla. I'm going to let you kind of explain a little bit to everybody what exactly Truckers Against Trafficking is and how you got involved with the organization. Sure. So thank you so much for having me on the show tonight. We always love the opportunity to get to uh, speak directly to truckers through whatever medium. And so this is this is fantastic. So Truckers Against Trafficking um, was started in 2009 to educate, equip, empower and mobilize members of the trucking industry. And now we've expanded to the bus and energy sectors as well to recognize and report human trafficking. Um, I got involved with TAT because I'm one of the co-founders of TAT. Um, my mom, my sister, and I started the organization. Um, the main reason we, we chose truckers is we were studying the issue of human trafficking. Um, my mom's parents had owned a small motel in El Paso, Texas when she was growing up, and their main clientele were truck drivers. And um, when we looked at where victims might be um, well, that were being encountered and recovered, both uh, youth as well as adult victims of trafficking. One of the places was always at truck stops and rest areas. And my mom was like, you know who we should get are truck drivers. Most of them are really great people. If they knew what was happening, they'd do something about it. And that has been proven absolutely true since the beginning of TAT. We have had truck driver after truck driver, um, and now bus driver and energy sector employees that are just like, that could be my kid, that, you know, this can't happen out there. What do we need to do? That is so true. And I I know I, I had no idea until I was doing my research that you guys had branched out into the bus industry, the oil and the, and the electric industry. And I'm like, that is so smart because there's so many people, especially in those sectors that are out there, you know, dealing with the public all the time, especially people in the busing industry, you know, when you teach them the signs and what to look for, you know, that's just so many more eyes out there that could really help out. Absolutely. And I mean, when we started the model, it was obviously with the trucking industry and, you know, for years it was just the focus was the trucking industry, but you all stood up as this example for other yeah. industries, not just within transportation, but beyond. It was the energy industry that actually came to us because of their trucking overlap. And they said, we're using this with our fleets, you know, that are, are hauling and stuff, but we want something for our, you know, the rest of our industry as well. And so we created the Empower Freedom curriculum that we have, but it, it was because of the example of the trucking industry, how you all rallied around this issue, 
how you took it on as your own and that you are in fact making calls and victims are being recovered as a result of those calls and perpetrators are being arrested. And like that is absolutely the goal, 100%. I was going to say, you know, you never really heard too much about human trafficking or what exactly it was. I would say, you know, I don't think it was really in the media that widespread or certainly wasn't called human trafficking up until maybe I would say five or six years ago. And now it's really become a thing. And one of the things I will say that I absolutely love since I, you know, wound up finding out about truckers against trafficking is is like so many of the truck stops, especially all the TAs, (laughs) and they always have the, the signs in the bathrooms and they have posters up, you know that are advertising and saying, if you see this going on, please call Truckers Against Trafficking, which I think is great. And I know I see them everywhere in the truck stops, which is really good information to be getting out there. Absolutely. The truck stops are some of our strongest partners. Um, you know, when we, we talk about the trucking industry, it's obviously the the drivers, but it is also the companies and it is the truck stops um, and the travel plazas because they are great distribution points, right? Like they're getting that message out there for anybody victims that are going to the bathroom or a driver passing by that maybe is a known operator and hasn't heard of truckers against trafficking um, through, you know, any type of company training, obviously. And so it's just a distribution point to have that and, and being paying attention to your surroundings, which I think truck drivers are already naturally doing. You guys are trained to be vigilant. You're already paying attention. So it's just one more thing to have your eye out for. Absolutely. And and I was just going to say, I think that's one of the things. So I had put up on our uh, Married to the Road Facebook page information about how people could go onto your website to learn more and to also get the certification like Larry and I did a few years ago. And it's a really super easy process, but it's so informational and there's so much really good information in there that I know that ever since we took that, I have found myself being way more vigilant when we're in rest areas or we're in truck stop. We're constantly looking if we see cars around that really did not, there really shouldn't be cars in this area. You know, we tend to be very right. vigilant watching now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, that's, it, you know, the national human trafficking hotlines reported that over the last five years, 41% of the calls that truck drivers have reported are minors so that means 59 percent are adult victims but you've got 41 percent of kids that are still being trafficked out there and what that says is the truckers are in the right place at the right time and they're doing the right thing they're making those calls on behalf of victims they are trying to bring uh law enforcement to bear to recover those victims and take them to safety and honestly law enforcement depends on the average citizen it's 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 typically citizenry that is reporting crimes to law enforcement. They react to it, right? So Mm -hmm. you've got 3 million strong, you know, American truck drivers that are out there looking, being vigilant, and then making those calls. And it's really exciting. And I did want to say we've always had the -the over-the-road truck driver training, but we also recently released a local driver training as well as movers in home delivery. So if any of the listening audience falls into one of those categories where I'm not over the road, I don't go to truck stops. We actually have um, tailored training for local drivers and we have tailored training for movers in home delivery. And those are all available on our website for free, or you can send us an email and we can send you hard copies of whatever you need um, free of charge. Oh, that's that's great information. I know when we had promoted it a couple of years ago, I, I had a truckers group that I belonged to of truckers wives and a lot of the wives were saying, well, can we go get certified? I'm like, absolutely, because yeah. so yeah. oftentimes the wives are in the truck stops too with the husbands. Some of them ride with their husbands. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't have to be a trucker to go get the information and to get certified, especially if you're in these areas where you may, you know, even rest areas. So it's always a good source of information to at least go look at and familiar, to familiarize yourself with. Absolutely. Totally agree. And, you know, we give all of our materials. They've always been free since the beginning. That was one of our core values. And yeah, we make them accessible to the public. And we even have on our website, like a full indicators page. So you can look through there as well and refresh that. And then we do have apps that are free on Apple phones, as well as Androids that you can download the Truckers Against Trafficking app. It has all the information, our the training videos, the uh, indicators, like all of the stuff from the wallet cards, and it can connect you with law enforcement as well if you do see something. 
Oh, I see. I didn't even know that. That's great. Because I was yeah. just thinking with technology these days, everybody is so reliant on our phones and our apps. That is uh, that is so awesome that you made that so accessible in an app format. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we were getting calls to do that. They're like, I keep losing my wallet card. Can't <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, we can do that. So yeah, it, that is available and we're constantly updating and making improvements and you know, as more information comes available, you know, traffickers change their methods of operation. And so, you know, alerting everybody to that by updating the app, we update our materials as well, but like the app is obviously faster. So it is, that's the way to get the information out there. Absolutely. We're going to take, we're going to take just a quick break here and we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're talking with Kyla with Trekkers Against Trafficking. We'll be back in just a few minutes. You're listening to Taillights with the Bombs. Tips for starting your own trucking company. If you want to start your own trucking company, there are many things to consider. The Truckers Network has put together a list of tips for starting your own trucking company that will help you get going in the right direction. Have a business plan. Pick a name for your trucking company. Perform a trademark search online to make sure your name is available. Select your target market. Targeting the right market is critical when starting a trucking company. Becoming a special carrier can help you avoid some competition. It could also help you increase your sales opportunities. Make some important decisions. Come up with your rates. Decide if you want to be an owner-operator and will you do short hauls or long hauls. Know the legal requirements. You must have a valid CDL, commercial driver's license, and if you're going to be an owner-operator, you'll need to follow the terms of the FMCSA. That's the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. And you must use United States Department of Transportation and Motor Carrier Authority numbers. That's the USDOT and MC. The USDOT number tracks your safety records and regulatory compliance. The MC number, also known as Operating Authority, classifies your trucking company and the cargo you can carry. To get these numbers, you'll need to register your trucking business with the FMCSA. Get trucking insurance and register with the UCR system after getting your USDOT and MC numbers. Apply for an IFTA, that's an International Fuel Tax Agreement permit. This permit allows your business to get one fuel license and the rule says you can file fuel tax returns four times a year in the state your business is based in. There are several more permits and forms I didn't mention that you'll need based on where you plan to drive and the goods you intend to carry. The FMCSA is a great place to learn more. Funding your trucking business. In most cases, starting a new trucking company takes between ten and thirty thousand dollars. Keep in mind that this doesn't include buying a semi truck, only paying the down payment on one. There are many factors that go into the decision of whether or not to buy a new truck or a used truck. If you decide to get a used truck, be sure to thoroughly inspect it, and I would even recommend having a diesel mechanic take a look. Insuring your business assets. A trucking insurance company that specializes in commercial vehicles is the best place to turn to. You can also consult the FMCSA to gain some understanding of what type of trucking insurance is right for you. Another great source of information is trucking forums and social media communities on Facebook. Prepare your truck for the road. Decals displaying your USDOT number, the company's registered name, and your radio frequency ID tags must be displayed on your truck. Don't forget license or international registration plates. You'll also need to install an FMCSA registered and compliant electronic logging device. It's called an ELD. These steps are just a brief overview of starting your own trucking company. The Truckers Network has some great articles that you can read to learn more about trucking in general. And when you become a member, you'll get some great discounts to help you save money so more of your profit stays in your pocket. Hi, I'm Charlie Claver, and I'm excited to join the TNC Radio.Live family. You can hear my show, Highway Fever, on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right after Mind Your Trucking Business. One quick question. What have you done today 
to make trucking better for tomorrow. Join me, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right after Mind Your Trucking Business on Highway Fever. Hotshot Secret. We share the science behind common diesel problems. For example, diesel fuel cetane levels. The cetane rating in diesel fuel is 42 to 45. Most diesel engines operate more efficiently with a cetane rating of 48 to 50. One treatment of Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme will raise your cetane 7 points, increase fuel economy, and improve cold starts. Hotshot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hotshot Secret. Powered by science. To report possible human trafficking or to ask for help, call 888-3737-888. Để báo cáo có thể có nạn buôn người hoặc yêu cầu giúp đỡ, hãy gọi 888 3737 888. Para reportar una posible trata de personas o para pedir ayuda, Llame al 888-3737-888. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I am your host, Angie. And we've been talking this evening with Kyla. She's uh, with Truckers Against Trafficking. And we were talking a little bit before the break. Um, one of the things you had mentioned was how the traffickers are constantly changing their tactics and their ways of, you know, abducting people. What are some things that you could give us as far as maybe tips or advice that us truckers in the community could look out for, for signs of human trafficking? Sure. So um, at truck stops and rest areas, I mean, I would say anywhere, if you ever see a minor being sold for commercial sex, so you ever see a minor in prostitution, that is automatically a trafficking victim, period, period. Doesn't matter if they're on drugs, it doesn't matter, you know, if they say they like it, doesn't, it, nothing matters, they're automatically a trafficking victim. Um, other signs that you might have are there might be um, bruises or cuts, they might seem disheveled, dirty, hungry. Um, a lot of times they'll only be fed once a day, once every three days, um, if they haven't made quota, um, they could be out for 24, 36, 48 hours without any rest, without any food, because, you know, they can't come back in to the trafficker. The trafficker will beat them and they, they push them back out on the streets again to make that money. So if they seem somewhat disoriented um, from that malnutrition or that abuse, being paying attention to those things, it could be that car or that RV that's parked out back by the commercial vehicles. If that's not typical in a particular area, which oftentimes it's not, they're typically parked up by the store, um, just pay attention to that vehicle. We've had numerous um, cases where uh, truck drivers have called in. There was one case in Texas where they saw a Cadillac back by the commercial vehicles. Um, they were watching it at one point. You know, a, a couple of girls got out of the back of the car and went to different trucks and got in. Um, they called law enforcement. They activated the the management of the truck stop. This guy had four teenage girls in there. They were running ads online for, you know, like a trucker special. And he had four teenage girls that he was trafficking and he was a known trafficker in the area. And they were able to get those girls and arrest him. And, you know, you've got... If you see people going to and from an RV or a van, um, they're just, they're knocking, they're going in, then they leave 15, 20 minutes later. Again, your trafficking victim might be in there. If you see a car pull in, drop somebody off, leave, come back 15 minutes later and pick them up, that's typically your trafficker dropping off the victim to the buyer and then coming back and picking them up later. Um, they, they could have a branding tattoo. Not every trafficker brands their victims. So don't think, oh, she doesn't have a tattoo, therefore. Um, but sometimes they'll do that. Um, we've seen tra um, branding tattoos as crude as like product barcodes that get scanned at the grocery store on your, you know, boxes. Mm -hmm. or whatnot. But you'll more commonly see things like money signs, treasure chests, coins. It'll say daddy's moneymaker, cash only. Stuff like that. Um, some of them are just like real straightforward. 
um, which I, I won't use that language on the air, but it should be obvious to you. These by people selling, you know, supposedly selling perfume or magazines or stuff like that. And, you know, that's presumably not to be run off or um, called in on. Then when they get up there and they're engaged in that conversation, which appears to be a normal, um, you know, sales pitch, that's when they're offering more than the magazines or the perfumes they're selling. Again, that is the trafficker shifting technique. Um, It used to be you would have a lot of uh, people on the lots, working the lots. And in some places you have that still, but a lot of the truck stops have increased security. They're training their employees. They're watching for it, right? So like um, not a lot of places are that brazen anymore. And so it is, they're running ads. They're setting up in a hotel or a massage parlor nearby, and people are going in there. They're pulling in and dropping off. It, it just, it looks different now. They're, they're trying to hide it. They're trying to act like it's for something else. But then the switcheroo happens. That's so crazy. I know that there was a friend of mine who a year ago had contacted me. I mean, I, she had messaged me and she said, listen, there's, there's a situation I'm not sure about. And she was questioning whether or not she should call the police. And it was a young girl who looked like she was homeless and looked like, you know, she could tell that she was probably under the influence of something, but she also looked very scared. And she was in the parking lot sitting on a curb and she's just like, something just doesn't feel right about this. And there was a car that kept circling around her. And I'm like, if something doesn't feel right, you need to call. Well, she wound up getting the nerve of to call. And it was a girl who had gotten away from her trafficker, you know, and if my friend had not made that call, but the, she sat there and second guessed herself for 10 minutes. And I know we're all like that, but it's like, you know, you don't second guess yourself. Let the police do that. <laughs> right. And, and I train cops all across this country. And what they will all tell you is they would rather you call and be wrong than not call at all. The, there's no, it's like the good Samaritan rule. If you, in your gut, think something's off, just make that call. Let cops come and sort it out like what you're saying. Because if it's nothing, it's nothing. But if it's something, my gosh, you could really alter their lives because the traffickers will come back and look for them. You know, that's their moneymaker. And so they're seeing that as a, a loss of profit for themselves. And, you know, most trafficking victims don't get abducted. They're not kidnapped. Most trafficking victims, they know they're traffickers. Um, they've been lured in under the false promise of a job or a false promise of a relationship or somebody's going to take care of them. Um, you listed out at the, the start of the show a lot of those vulnerabilities. And so you can see where a trafficker can like weave, you know, weave their way in. I always say single parent households. I was a single mom for a number of years and I was working three jobs uh, mm-hmm. during that time. And it was not for lack of love of my child. But how could a trafficker look at that situation. They could look at it and they might be that nice neighbor that comes in and is like, oh, I'll watch your daughter. Don't worry. Right. And they start bonding with my kid. They're there for me. I'm so relieved to have them in my life. They start talking to my kid. Well, if you need me, your mom's always at work. She's always so tired. I'll, you know, I'll listen to you. Right. So they like build that trust. And then once they have that, that's that's the grooming process, right? And then they can turn them out. So like that can happen. Or if I was a young enough single parent, they might want me. And so they'll use my kid as leverage. If you ever want to see your kid again, or if you don't want this to happen to your kid, you're going to comply with this, right? And so there's just a lot of situations like that. And then we have a massive increase, certainly with the opioid epidemic, but then with the pandemic, it was exasperated and it has not gone back down of familial trafficking. So grandparents, parents, uncles and aunts, siblings that are selling their own family members to pay for rent, to pay for drugs, to pay for a certain lifestyle. And so even though the pandemic has subsided, they've crossed that line, right? And now this is another source of income. And so there's a, a massive amount of familial trafficking taking place in this country as well. Oh, that's just, that is just horrific. And every time, I mean, every time you think about or just listen to a human trafficking story, you know, my first thought process goes to, you know, people say, oh, well, thank goodness they found her. Thank goodness she's safe. But then my first thought process goes, yeah, thank goodness she's safe. But oh my gosh, the the trauma that that woman went through and which our child and now the trauma that they're going to go through going through the therapy and trying to deal with this for the rest of their lives. That's what I always think about. This is something that will never go away. (laughs) 
Right. And, you know, I, I, I have the pleasure of working with uh, a lot of survivors and have over the last, you know, 14 years of being with Tat. And they'll all tell you, I don't know one of them that won't say that it's a lifelong process, you know, of healing and, you know, just really the self-reflection and the work that's required to really sort of come back to that and lead a full and healthy life. But what I'm always so, I find them to be amazingly compassionate to others because they're like, yeah, we've had our trauma. I've had my trauma and it, it was bad. And of course, but like everybody experiences trauma and we all go through things, whether it's, you know, abuse or a rape or um, poverty or whatever. And we've all had these different traumas that have happened in our lives. And so, you know, it's just, they're like, almost sort of universal, like we can, we can overcome this, we can work through it. And I, I just, I find their strength very uh, amazing and, you know, noteworthy uh, that they look at everybody and they're like, but we can all overcome this. And they, they tend to be very compassionate to, to others as well as they're, as they're healing themselves, they're looking to help others heal. And, and that's wonderful. And I could see how that could totally help others because they're relating to other people that have had trauma or been in that situation. We're going to uh, take another quick break, but I did want to talk to you when we come back a little bit about um, the Freedom Driver Project because Larry and I actually had a chance to uh, experience that last year at Iowa AD Truck Show. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. We are speaking with Kyla from Trekking Against Traffickers, and you are listening to Taillights with the Bombs. Be sure to listen to Building Strong Minds with Dr. Chris, Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, right here on TNCRadio.live. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. If you ask the average person, where does depression come from? They might say something like, oh, it's a chemical imbalance, or comes from a lot of stress or from bad things happening. But did you know that depressed people think differently than non-depressed people? The amazing psychologist, Dr. Marty Seligman, did some research that shone a light on how depressed people think. And he came up with three different ways that depressed people tend to think that's different from non-depressed people. The first one is depressed people take a lot of things and personalize. They, they, they tend to feel personally responsible for bad things. They blame themselves. It's somehow always a reflection on their worth. And secondly, they see things globally. If they had a test with an F on it, they would say, see, this is proof that I'm a failure. Whereas a non-depressed person would tend to say, you know, I didn't study hard enough for this, or boy, this test really got me in a bad position. But they would not say, I'm a failure overall. The third thing that depressed people tend to do is they project doom and gloom into the future. Not only is today difficult, but they say it'll always be bad. It'll always be too difficult. In fact, what I've learned, if there's one link and only one link to depression, it's the perception of hopelessness. Hello, I'm Ron Samuels. I put it in reverse gear here, Monday through Thursday nights at 10, 9 central on tncradio.live. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Whether you're moving down the highway or taking a break, now's a good time to take a moment to tell God your hopes, concerns, and gratitude. You want someone to pray with? No problem. Just call the TFC Global 24-Hour Prayer Line. It's 866-515-9406. By the way, if you're using the TNC Radio.com, live app, just press the prayer line button to be connected to a prayer warrior who will confidentially pray with and for you. The number again, 866-515-9406, or tap the prayer line button at the tncradio.live app. Hey drivers, did you hear music on tncradio.live that you really liked? Or maybe you heard us interview an author of a book you'd like to read or listen to. You can get the books, music, and other products you hear about by going to our website, 
at www.tncradio.live and clicking on the shopping cart. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs, and I am Angie. And tonight we've been speaking with Kyla from Truckers Against uh, Trafficking. And um, I, what I had mentioned before the commercial break is when Larry and I were at the Iowa AD Truck Show last summer, um, you guys had a trailer there that's called the Freedom Driver Project. And I was going to let you explain a little bit about what that is, and then I'll kind of explain Larry and I's experience, which it was amazing. Yes, so our Freedom Drivers Project is an exhibit trailer that has um, artifacts from survivors with parts of their stories that really help to illustrate in a really powerful way the push and pull factors that that bring people into a trafficking um, experience. We also have um, on there just like uh, informational television screens that are talking about different cultural influences on human trafficking and how we're sort of, you know, predisposed to sort of accept sort of a lot of these ideas around it, like pimping and hoeing, right? I mean, that's a trafficking, Mm -hmm. that's a trafficker, right? But like we've grown up in the society. And so it's really sort of pulling the curtain back on that. And then we have um, an entire display on how the trucking industry and how the industries we work with are in fact combating it and making a difference. But when people walk through the trailer and they see those artifacts, whether it's the shoes or the gel pants or the, you know, lipstick, and you read some of those stories, they're just like, it takes it down to that micro level, right? We can talk about in these huge numbers, 50 million, 50 million people enslaved in the world today, right? Like that's such a huge number, but. And so it can seem overwhelming or impersonal, but when you look at, hey, it's this person and like mm-hmm. read their story, like that's really, that's really powerful. I've got goosebumps right now because that's exactly what I was going to say. The little mementos and the little objects that are up on the wall in the display case, they each have a story telling you, you know, who it belonged to and what the story was behind it, you know, and it's just like, by the time we got done, I, I think we were in there for like 20 minutes because we wanted to make sure we caught it all and read it all. And we were in there with some other friends of ours. And by the time we walked out, we all just kind of looked at each other. It was like, oh, my gosh, we were all in tears. We just felt emotional. It's just like, wow, it just hits so close to home because you're you can relate to so many of those stories. And you're just like, wow, I never knew they used that or I can't believe this is how they trick people. And I can't believe she survived that. And it just kind of left you blown away and, you know, wanting to make a difference or what can we do to make a difference? And I'm telling you, ever since we took the training program online, which I do want to tell everybody again, we posted the link, but it's on Truckers Against Trafficking website. It's 15 or 20 minutes out of your days, free information. It's a video. It's a little questionnaire for you to get certified so that you can be trained to understand what you're looking for with human trafficking. And it's so easy and just a wealth of knowledge. But anyway, so I wanted to say you are also going to be at math. And I know you had mentioned that the, the Freedom Driver Project will not be there, but you are going to have a booth there. Um, and and uh, you said there's going to be about five people there. Yeah, five people from the TAP team will be there. Um, they'll have all of our materials that people can come and take back to their companies, back for themselves. If you need new decals for your truck or whatever, that'll all be there. And I think they always have um, T-shirts available for sale as well. But um, yeah, please stop by and and say hi and take pictures with the logo and and the team and you know ever we're always just so happy to be at the trucking shows. Like, they used to be my favorite thing. I don't get to go to them anymore because they've got me on the road doing other stuff. But um, <laughs> just like I love the trucking shows, I love just the culture and meeting people and shaking hands and listening to Tony Justice play his concerts and just. All of that. It's just, it's fun to see friends. And I'll tell you, when we started TAT, it was ground level grassroots truck drivers. It was truck drivers before we had any corporate sponsors, before we had any, you know, company buy-in even. Um, It was truck drivers that were like, whoa, what can we do? They helped build our social media. They helped build, you know, um, our reputation. they, they got the message out. They took it back to their companies and asked their safety directors to train. So, you know, there's nothing like a good old trucking show, man. I'm telling you. 
Well, and that was one of the things I was going to mention. Um, when I was on your website the other day, it was actually talking about how like UPS is now incorporating it in their training program. But I know that I've talked to other truckers out here that said it was part of their onboarding at their particular company. And that's how they learned about Truckers Against Trafficking. I was like, well, really, that is so interesting that, you know, there's trucking companies now that are using this as part of their onboarding when they're bringing truckers onto their company to teach them about this. Yes, this is one of our, well, it is our core ask with any company. Um, when we go and speak at an association or a conference or um, even at trucking shows, you'll, you'll meet a lot of small fleets and, and the companies. That's our first core ask. Train your drivers. Embed this in your, on, your um, orientation and add it to your safety um, meetings for your current drivers. Like, get this out there to your drivers. You have this captive audience when they come on board, show it to them. So yes. And then I work with the public sector. So I'm like, Hey, pass them out of way stations when they're passing through for inspections, give them a wallet card or put it on, put it on the inspection report, the little message about, you know, human trafficking in the hotline, like just get that message out there in every which way. So that when you see it, you have that information at your fingertips to know how to report. That's crazy you just said that because it just reminded me that about six months ago I did get pulled into a way station and they did have your stickers on the counter. <laughs> I hey, remember there you that. Go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, and, and, you know, what I would also say just to everybody listening, if you see something, you know, we've, we've heard, we don't run the national hotline. We've heard that the hotline has really long wait times a lot of times. Please call 911. You don't even have to give your name to 911. I know that the, the, joy of the hotline is it's anonymous and confidential, but you don't have to give your name to law enforcement, but make that call. 911 is going to pick up a lot faster. Most of the time, get somebody out there. Um, just get somebody out there so that they can actually respond to this case and see if this person needs help. And, and I, I know a lot of times, like when I've talked and when I've talked to truck drivers, and especially I would say the older generation, you know, it's always a joke that the women in, in the, you know, parking lots, they've always called them as lot lizards. And a lot of the older people, they just kind of, you know, turn their way to them. But, it, you know, you really need to pay attention because, yes, it may be a prostitute. But like you said, it could be someone who's stuck in a human trafficking situation. And oftentimes, you know, if you just pay attention to that particular person, their mannerisms, maybe how they look or how they're dressed. Or like you said, you know, if there's a car that keeps coming up to them every, you know, 10, 15 minutes checking in on them, you know, you could be the difference between, you know, making that phone call and saving that person's life and it's not always children a lot of times it's adults you know people our age that are stuck in this vicious cycle yeah and and that's what i i do want to say something about that um a lot of traffickers have based on the laws around this country if you traffic a minor you'll be going away for a really long time the consequences unfortunately drastically reduce once that person's 18 or older. So they're purposely waiting many times until that 18th birthday. They're grooming up until that point. They're going to the person that's 18 or 19, or they go to somebody that's a little bit older that might already have a substance issue uh, because of prior abuse or whatever. But here's what I'll tell you. If you look at the statistics on prostitution, and you can go to... Um, Prostitution Research and Education online, they're a think tank. They do a lot of studies. When you look at the studies on prostitution, and this is around the U.S. as well as around the globe, 89% of people in prostitution that have been surveyed in all of these different studies, and it's consistent, want out, and they cannot get out. And then you have on other studies of how they got in, 60% meet the federal definition for human trafficking. An additional 38% are there through lack of other viable options. So it's that homeless youth that is, um, you know, turning a, doing a sex act in order to eat dinner. Or um, that mother who just fled a domestic violence situation and she's got three kids and the shelter d couldn't take them in. And so... She's turning tricks right now while she tries to figure out and get on her feet for her kids. So, like, you're talking about really desperate people. 98%, 60% plus 30, 38%, 98% of people do not want to be there. Do not want to be there. So, when you're looking at that older person or, or what is called, yeah, like in this industry, a lot lizard, right? When you're looking at that person, you are looking at a highly traumatized person. And mm -hmm. when they're older and more run down, 
they've just been traumatized longer. Yes. And maybe that person right now isn't a trafficking victim, but I guarantee you, you listen to their story and you're going to hear it, the trafficking, the trafficking. And you think about that. If I was trafficked for five years, eight years, right? And then Mm -hmm. uh, the trafficker left me and I have no self-esteem and I have all these health implications that come from, you know, prostitution. And I have, you know, zero skills because I've got this huge gap in my resume and like, I don't even, or maybe I never even got to finish school because of when they trafficked me. Um, Right. All of these things play in and they literally feel like where, where can I go? And every interaction is treating them like an object that can be bought like scum, like somebody that can be dismissed or ignored. So that people like internalize that. You internalize that you are nothing. And every survivor I've ever talked to, they'll tell you, I felt like I was nothing. I felt like I wasn't worth a law enforcement officer's time. I wasn't worth anybody's time. I wasn't worth the dirt on the bottom of my trafficker's shoes. Like I felt that low. And they like literally feel that way. So when you are seeing that older person, you're just looking at somebody that's been traumatized longer. They all need compassion and and just basic humanity. Oh, absolutely. We're going to take another quick break and we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're talking with Kyla from Truckers Against Trafficking and you are listening to Taillights with the Bombs. As a professional driver, the engineers at Front Lane know that you remain focused on the road regardless of weather and traffic conditions. That's not always true of the drivers behind you. Every nine minutes, another commercial vehicle is rear-ended by a driver failing to control their speed. And guess who gets the blame? When you have to brake quickly, Tailbone illuminates a series of bright LED lights that allow the driver behind you to react up to 50% faster. Using amazing accelerometer technology and a battery that will last for years, Tailbone meets the standards set by the NHTSA and the FMCSA. Learn more by visiting www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. That's www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. Approved in all 50 states, it's Tailbone by Frontlane. This blog on tncradio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Five ways to handle sickness on the road as a truck driver. Being sick on the road is one of the worst situations a truck driver could be in. As if being sick isn't bad enough, sickness on the road is ten times worse. If you're sick at work, you can simply go home for the day and rest. This isn't the case for truck drivers. Truck drivers are hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles from their home. When a truck driver gets sick, it affects their ability to deliver their load on time. They also lose money while trying to recover. As a trucker, it's important to know how to handle sickness on the road. Here are five tips for you. Stay hydrated. Drinking water and electrolytes have a ton of benefits while you're sick. Water helps replace the fluids lost while loosening up mucus. Hot liquids also have benefits as well. The steam from hot liquids helps relieve congestion and soothe a sore throat. Stay clear of sugary drinks. They'll dehydrate you. Rest. Sometimes the best thing you can do while being sick is rest. Your health's more important than getting a load delivered on time. Plus, it can be dangerous to drive while you're sick. Take a day or two to rest and get better. Continuing to work while being sick will only drag out the healing time. Take medicine. If you start to feel sick, get medicine as soon as possible. Vitamin C supplements are great immune boosters. Also, avoid eating unhealthy, greasy foods. Eating properly keeps you healthy and boosts your immune system. If you're already sick, Check to see which over-the-counter medicine would help the most. Talk to your dispatch. Let dispatch know what's going on. If you're sick, you may not be able to perform your daily duties, or you may not be able to drive at all. Don't rush recovery time. Rushing recovery time can result in re-injuring yourself. Truck drivers know that if the truck's parked, then they're not making money. It's better to take a week off to recover then try to work when you're not ready and further injuring yourself. This blog on TNCRadio.live was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. 
catch Mind Your Trucking Business Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern with James Rogers, Jamie Irvine, and Tom Kelly. They provide expert advice about starting, operating, and growing a professional trucking business. It's Mind Your Trucking Business on TNCRadio.live. With the latest in traffic, weather, and information, catch the morning grind weekdays right here on TNC Radio. Live. Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I am Angie. Just a quick reminder that coming up next, we've got Clutch Time Sports with Anderson and Banker. If you're a sports fan, you definitely want to stick around for this great show. Also, as a reminder, next Wednesday, uh, Tail Lights with the Bombs, we're actually going to be live. We're not doing a typical show, but we're going to be live at the Mid-America Truck Show. So be sure to tune in and listen. Tom Kirk will be there. Tom Kelly will be there. Larry and I. Lots of other people. So please be sure to listen in. And speaking of Tom Kelly, Tom, we're going to ask you, you had mentioned during one of the commercial breaks um, about truckers using the free Wi-Fi in truck stops. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so th- this is ingenious and devious, however you want to look at it. Um, so what happens is you pull into a truck stop and you go right away, oh my gosh, I've got the best signal. I'm doing so, I can't believe what a great signal. Or you pull into a truck stop and you see, hey, free Wi-Fi or whatever. And then you realize that you're getting text messages about opportunities. Let's put it that way. Can I say it that way? What's happened is people come in and they set up temporary hotspots. A lot of times the temporary hotspot will be, say, Marriott or Holiday Inn or whatever so that you're if you don't guard it on your phone properly you will think you've connected to the marriott or the holiday Inn, because you stop at those places sometimes and you have loaded them into your phone and allowed yourself to join them right right okay so you think you've connected to marriott you're not on marriott you're on steve's hotspot who now that you run Steve's Hotspot, sends you a link. It looks innocent enough about increase your speed or perhaps it's, you know, um, find out about the local attractions or perhaps get a pizza delivered to your truck, whatever. All he's doing now is getting the information from you that he needs now to send you a text message to tell you about other opportunities that he has for you. Wow. It's ingenious. It's and people don't even realize it's happening and they never get out of their truck and it works. Oh, I could, to- I could totally see that. All of a sudden now there's there's a conversation going on with and and those who don't want to have anything to do with that still get suckered into it because the next thing they know that you know, and it was all because they wanted to have that free Wi-Fi, or they wanted mm-hmm. to have that. I mean, because and believe me, they they come in there with five G hotspots that are so fast, so much faster than what you're going to typically get at a truck stop, and they you know they're like, oh my gosh, look how fast this is, and in the meantime, it is just a deception for people to be able to get in there and communicate with you over your cell phone and create issues oh that's crazy i i can totally see that though modern technology these days i'm telling you it's crazy what they can do with with your phones and your free wi-fi and hot spots and oh my gosh yep so have you heard of that before kyla i have not well that's that's good to know it's, it's a good one to watch out for because it's it's happening all the time and i think it's what you were talking earlier about how they change their methods as they go this is one of those Sneaky little things that if somebody doesn't tell you what's going on, you may never know that that you that you were even in the hot spot for somebody. So I encourage drivers every day as you travel around, every single day before you go to bed, turn off your phone and turn it back on again. That's a good it, idea. It cl- yeah, it clears out so much stuff that you may have picked up by accident. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing what you can get people to do if you get them on, on, on your hotspot. It's amazing. Absolutely. Well, Kyla, we just got just a few minutes left, and I just wanted to say, uh, if there was anything you wanted to, to let everybody know um, as far as how they could become certified on Truckers Against Trafficking and get more information um, about this amazing organization. Yeah, sure. So our website is uh, truckersagainsttrafficking.org. If you go to the Get Certified link, it'll take you right there, and you can just walk on through that process and um, get a certificate sent to your email um, once you complete that. We also, you can always send us an email at info at truckersagainsttrafficking.org, um, and we'll send you any of the hard copy materials, whether it's uh, window decals, wallet cards, brochures, posters, DVDs, whatever you want, we will send you for free. And really, I just want to say, um, we're on all of the social media. You can download the app, but I just want to say thank you to all of the truckers. Number one, for doing the jobs that you do on a daily basis. You do keep this country running. You keep all of North America running. So thank you for the job that you do. Um, but I also just wanted to say thank you for being an example of how industry can leverage uh, their networks and their expertise to combat a horrible injustice and this evil crime of human trafficking you are a beacon you are an example to other industries that are following suit because of what you have done so i just want to say thank you thank you for caring thank you for making this your own issue and thank you for being truckers against trafficking oh that was amazing that's so awesome and yes please please download the app I didn't know they had it myself, but I'm going to do that right after the show. <laughs> we all know that as truckers, we live by our modern conveniences, and knowing that they have an app is a great resource. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. I really, truly appreciate it. I know we would love to have you back on here because I'm sure there's a lot more we can talk about and inform everybody else, but thank you again so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. And just a reminder, everybody, we will not have our regular show next week, but we will still be on the air. We're going to be at Mid-America Truck Show, so please come listen to Tom Kirk, Tom Kelly, Larry, myself, and the other members at TNC Radio. It's going to be a fun night, so be sure to join us back here Wednesday night. And again, everybody, be safe out there, and thanks for listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs.